stuck in your work. And now they know that they didn't try. They get big coffee and crunchy donuts. How did you hook up with John Lennon and Double Fantasy and everything? You know, I don't know if it's just me, but um, I've had like the artist journey through this business because everything that's happened to me has just been like a, like a series of accidents that just led somewhere, um, including Bowie. But uh, because of the connection with Bowie and um, both me and John Lennon being on the Young Americans album, um, that's where the connection came from. And um, then that was recorded in 1974, and I worked with John in 1980. And um, th that the connection came out of that, and it was the last thing I ever expected to be called for. It was, you know, um, when John was putting the band together, uh, he, he, you know, my name was on the list. What he had done was he hired like the best session guys in New York. Like Hugh McCracken, who Just passed away. sadly passed away recently, he was kind of the guy that that I, I kind of like kept an eye on because Hugh McCracken has played on so many records that you guys have heard. He was a, he liked to keep invisible, but he was he he's played I mean everything from Paul Simon I mean you name it who he's played with, and he was a wonderful man and a great guitar player, and so and, and you know he could read charts and he was a session guy. Tony Levin, bass player who plays with Peter Gabriel and, and people like that. Uh, Andy Newmark, the drummer, from, originally from Sly. He played on Avalon, Ray Roxy Music. Matter of fact, when we did Double Fantasy, Roxy was doing Avalon, and John took the weekends off. So Andy would get on a plane on Friday night, record tracks with Roxy, and come back Monday to, to play John. He was playing drums, and he was also, and everybody on there was session players, and the reason that John had uh, the co-producer, Jack Douglas, call me and I was considered, Jack refers to me as the wild card. Because I couldn't read music, I didn't want to read music, and, and I just played by instinct. And John wanted one guy in there that did that, because that's what he did. All instinct. Jack Douglas, great guy. Oh yeah. I yeah. think he was with John the night. Jack might have been, because I spoke to John the night before. and. Uh, tell, I, tell, tell people in case they don't know, what, John Lennon passed away. And John Lennon was assassinated by a lunatic on December 8th, 1980, um, and um, the shock of all shocks. And I had spoken to him, we'd stayed in touch after we finished the records, because uh, Double Fantasy was climbing the charts, and we were going to go back in the studio in January. We had leftover tracks to do another album. And which eventually came out as Milk and Honey, and and Yoko was adamant to the record company that it was not to be touched other than mixed. So it's just the way it was recorded live. Um, and so you know, we, um, the last conversation I had with him, he said, "You're ready. We're going to go in in January, um, finish the record, and we're going to go tour." Uh, the last time I ever heard from him, and it was over. Uh, if my mother was alive, she'd look at you and go, oh my God, he's a drug addict. Tell everybody how long you've been sober and what got you there. Um, <clears throat> the sobriety thing is, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, you know, uh, well, I'm going to name it, I don't really give a crap. I mean, uh, uh, VH1 or MTV did a whole series of Where Are They Now crappy shows about a bunch of has-been guys, and it was the same story every time, you know, um, so-and-so did this drug and that drug and did this stupid behavior and now he's okay and I don't approach it like that. I had a goddamn good time the whole time. I was blasted out of my brains and somehow I functioned and um, it was acceptable. Um, the record company guys would supply us as well. I mean, you know, if you walked into an artist relations movie and you heard lock the door, you knew what was going to happen next. The, the drawer would open and out would come the drugs. But because I didn't have to get up at six in the morning and drive two hours to work. You could kind of get away with it. And plus it was sort of cool. 
for the outside world. We just lived like that, you know? And then one day you wake up and you go, well, I think I'm done. The light goes on and then you clean up or you don't and you end up, you know, without a career or dead. So it wasn't, I didn't do anything cool or special. I'm not better than the next guy. I mean, there's lots of people that have my problem or every walk of life. It just happens that when guys like me have it, because it's publicized, it's, they make a bigger deal out of it. There's cops, firemen, plumbers, accountants. This, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't pick one genre of person to go after. But, you know, by sobering up, um, it was time, that's all. And I, I, I mean, the progression of my playing, my staging, my songwriting did really get way better. Even though I, 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 I could do my job well, um, it, it, it opened up horizons just by not being um, intoxicated. But I, I did have fun. Uh, what musicians that are out there that you haven't played with, who would you like to play with? Wow, you know, I, I've been getting asked that question a lot. Um, Roddy Wood's been touring in between Stone's gigs. I would love. Oh, I'd love to see you play with him. Me and Ronnie uh, together, I think that would be a powerhouse blues band. Um, he's, he's definitely one person. He would come to mind first. Um, Keith would as well, but I've worked with Keith once before. So somebody I've never worked with before would be Ronnie. That would be in a heartbeat. Um, oh, I, I could definitely spend time on stage with Gary Clark Jr. in a heartbeat as well. Mm -hmm. This kid's pretty good, Gary Clark, right? Gary Clark's amazing. When I saw the Stones about a year and, and, and something ago, uh, there were some very well-known guitar players up there, um, guests, you know, and um, Gary played the first three notes, outdid the rest of the notes that the other famous guests did with three notes. He's a special player. How about doing some blues for us? Because I know you love the blues. Oh, blues Anything. is cool. And just... Thank <laughs> you.